What's going on everyone? I'm back and today we're going to be talking specifically auction type drafts, the tips and tricks associated with these type of formatted drafts, and basically how to put together the best available roster. Now I've got my own personal list of strategies that I always have a lot of success with and I wanted to share those specifically with all of you so let's get right into it. Now before we get into our list of strategies I do first want to talk about the auction drafting format itself because it is different than the typical snake format and I do think that the snake format right now is a little bit more popular so if you find yourself in this category where you don't quite know all the rules to the auction format have no fear I've got you covered on this front it's actually pretty straightforward so the first couple of things that you need to know and it's not a long list is that no matter the league size you find yourself in each team has the exact same amount of betting money to start with usually right around two hundred dollars and you're gonna go ahead and nominate players throughout this drafting process so where you go ahead and draft uh, as would be in a snake format isn't actually a thing here because every person gets to nominate a player and then the highest bid goes ahead and drafts that player uh, pretty straightforward and the second pretty much final thing you need to know is that there is uh, a long range of pricings toward every single player so the best players are going to be the most expensive makes sense you're not going to be able to put together a roster of all the superstars you're gonna have to balance out more expensive with mid-range players and then with low range prices as well and honestly that's pretty much it um, so now let's get into our list of strategies which will also talk about some of the rules and hidden things to know as well unveiling this list of strategies in order of significance the first and by far most important tip is you have to go into an auction draft knowing the roster you want to put together already. Already knowing the players you want to target from player 1A to 1B to even 1C. And I know what you're thinking, probably, well isn't this a strategy that you want to go with in every single type of draft? And yes it is, but by far it's even more so important in auction drafts. And the reason that I say that is because if you think about it, I would say every single year you go into a draft having marked down a group of guys that you think are going to potentially have a breakout year or a bounce back year based on a hunch or based on research, whatever it may be. And how many times in a snake format is one of those players picked right before you get to go on the clock or someone reaches for that player and they go around earlier? Well, that's the beauty of the auction draft because there really aren't rounds. Instead, every single player is nominated and you can go ahead and bid on every single player so if you really want one player you can go ahead and land them or especially if it's multiple players that have lower rankings than you think they should then you can have multiple or all of those players as long as it's feasible based on the funds that you have that's the great part so this is the ultimate reward now even though it's going to be the ultimate personal bias roster because it's going to be your favorite players, your group of players that you think are going to do the best in that respective season. Uh, the reward, if your squad hits, is so much greater because you know, based on your research, based on whatever you did, it's that group of guys that ultimately delivered that championship. Now, moving on and looking at point number two. The second tip on this list is one that I think is actually pretty simple, but at the same time easy to forget about. And that is that theoretically at the end of an auction draft, you want to get as close to zero dollars on your balance as possible. And the reason that I say this is because this will allow you to get the most bang for your buck. Now a good way to think about this is with daily fantasy football. And if you've ever done this exercise and you put together an entire roster, uh, from start to finish and you still have some money left over you're not gonna go ahead and click that submit button because why would you instead you can go ahead and upgrade one of those positional groups and that's exactly what you're gonna do and in terms of an auction draft that's the exact mindset that you want to have because going to as close to zero dollars at the end as possible could be the difference between having one positional player be a tier three player or a tier two player all the way to a tier one player and that should be your ultimate goal no matter what 
Continuing on with tip number three, this is actually something that I employ in every single one of my auction drafts, and that is that whenever it gets to your turn to nominate a player, instead of nominating a player that you want to draft, uh, go ahead and nominate the next most expensive player that you actually don't want. And let me elaborate, because let's say that you really want to go ahead and nominate, let's say for example, Antonio Brown or David Johnson. Well, the fact of the matter is, those players are going to get nominated regardless. Instead, what you should go ahead and do is nominate that other player that is still really expensive, but at the same time, you think is going to be a bust or you just think is priced way too much and you don't need on your roster. And the reason that I say this is because there's a lot of strategy that actually goes into an auction draft and this is one of the first pieces of strategies that you should feel comfortable with. Because if you think about it, if you go ahead and make someone else draft that player, you just set yourself up to be more comfortable in terms of the amount of money you have later on to spend. Because if, for example, uh, that one player that you nominated gets uh, picked by a team that also wanted to draft a player that gets nominated later on that you also really like, well, you're going to be in the better position to outbid that previous team. And that should always be, again, your ultimate goal. Put yourself in a position where you're most likely to succeed. And that is the root of this tip. Put yourself in a situation where you have always more money than the other teams around you. Moving on to tip number four, this is one that you should always theoretically try and strive towards, but at the same time, it can be very hard to abide by. And that is my own personal rule of thumb. If a bid gets too high, especially for an upper echelon player, and by too high, I mean maybe $10 more expensive, uh, then I try and get out of that bidding process. And the reason that I say that is because especially if it's early on in the drafting process, that's why I said upper echelon player, and you spend $10 more, then you really hurt yourself later on. Because if you spend $10 more right here in this situation, then later on, your roster is gonna get more unbalanced as it goes. Because one or two dollars, believe it or not, can be the difference between you landing a player that you really like or not. Now, the reason that there are exceptions with this strategy is because you can find yourself uh, based on what strategy you used, if it's a more conservative one, which I'll touch on later in my last tip, uh, that you can have more money than a lot of other players, so you can afford this. Uh, but this is all based on how a situation plays out. For that reason, and on top of this, there could be very well players in your draft that go ahead and arbitrarily inflate the price of a player just so they can put themselves in a situation uh, of advantage and obviously this can backfire but if you go ahead and bite and pay ten dollars or fifteen dollars more on a certain player than what their ranking is then you will really hurt yourself later on i've been in that situation when i first started out in these auction drafts you know yeah i must have this one player and then i go ahead spend ten dollars more but then, wouldn't you know it, later on, I really handicapped myself, and that's a situation that you really want to avoid. Talking the fifth and final tip that I have, it's one that centers around the draft strategy that you employ during an auction draft. And for me, the reason I have it all the way at number five is because even though uh, so these strategies can be followed, I personally prefer to kind of see how a draft plays out and not commit myself 100% to these strategies. But nonetheless, they are strategies that have to be discussed, and there are three of them. They are the aggressive strategy, the conservative strategy, and right in, the, in between, a balanced strategy. Now, starting off with an aggressive one uh, strategy, that is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, right out of the gate, going and targeting and landing probably two out of the first three or four players that get nominated. Uh, for the sake of argument, looking at this year as an example, maybe that's a David Johnson and a Le'Veon Bell, or a Todd Gurley and an Antonio Brown. Now, obviously, doing this would be impossible in a snake format, 
but that's the again great thing if you so wanted to you could do in an auction draft the problem here if you go ahead and do this you're gonna spend all the big portion of all of your money right away and then you're gonna put yourself in a situation where later on you're gonna have to nominate players that are worth something like five or ten dollars and you don't even put yourself in a situation where you can guarantee that you land them because more likely than not every other team is gonna have more money than you at that point in time so instead what you can go ahead and do on the other side of the spectrum is the conservative strategy in this strategy you wait until comparing it to a standard snake draft again all those players that you would see uh, get drafted in the first round and even part of the second round you let those players get drafted and instead you go ahead and start nominating and bidding on players after that point in time because by doing so you would think that the majority of the uh, players in your league have gone ahead and spend their funds so when the player that you like gets nominated you can pretty much guarantee that you can land them and what this is going to go ahead and do is get you a very deep bench for sure because you're going to be able to get guys that uh, other players or just won't be able to afford that are just a little bit more expensive than what they can afford uh, and even though I do prefer the conservative strategy over the aggressive one it also has its downfall in that you don't get that one bona fide playmaker uh, that can really carry your team now the strategy that I prefer the most is a balanced one so somewhere right in between for me, that's going ahead and still landing one of those playmakers. So in this year's draft, like that top five or top six guys, uh, and then waiting a little bit and then targeting guys that you feel very high and uh, comfortable with. So for me, that would be someone like, you know, uh, Doug Baldwin or a Juju Smith-Schuster um, and then getting high ceiling players afterwards. The reason I say this is because this way you're going to have the most balanced roster and you can still afford a relatively deep bench. So with that, let me know what you guys think because that concludes my list of top 5 strategies that you need to know to succeed in auction drafts. For the most part, they are pretty simple, but they can be something that you allow yourself to forget and I really do believe these are strategies that I follow every single year and in auction drafts I have a lot of success and you can too if you go ahead and follow them as well let me know what you guys think are there some strategies that I forgot would you rank them in a different order if you have any types of questions when it comes to auction drafts let me hear it in the comments section and as always if you enjoyed like subscribe and I'll see you guys in future videos